The second lesson, Luke 2, 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration that was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they, they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. As she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was, was with the angel, a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those who he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven and the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known that what had been told to them about this child and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorified and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I come in the little things, saith the Lord. This opening line from Evelyn Underhill's poem, Imminence, is a lovely reminder for us on this much restrained Christmas celebration. I come in the little things, not born of morning wings, of majesty, but I have set my feet amidst the delicate and bladed wheat that springs triumphant in the furrowed sod. There do I dwell in weakness and in power, not broken or divided, said our God. Ours is a Christmas Eve defined by the little things, a socially distanced wave, a gift in the mail, a kiss blown through the digital spaces of Zoom, a church near empty, yet bearing the presence of many. Little things, small gestures that signify our limits, while communicating something beyond us, a reality that takes the little things of the world and transforms them into a source of life, like wheat turned into bread, like a baby who would be our king and redeemer. There do I dwell in weakness and in power, said our God. Meetly, I fit my stature to your need. Underhill has God in tone later in this poem. Meetly, I fit my stature to your need. The God who comes in the little things does so not to impress us with how small God can get, but as an act of love, joining us as one of us, not simply taking on human form as a disguise, but as Underhill beautifully reminds us, to meet us in the very place that we are, to meet our need for wholeness, healing, and joy. It is the little child of a small family in a tiny town where God chose to dwell fully. It is this God we welcome into our COVID-shaped celebrations, a God who arrives quietly amidst the clamor of political power moves and human loss too much to bear, arrives into our world at love's appointed time. We have found ourselves living, living with limits hard to comprehend. Yet in the child born to Mary is our source of limitless grace. For there we experience the kind of joy and love that can only be shared. A little thing, a small gesture becomes a great thing a marvelous and wonderful jester, all of it wrapped up in a bundle lying in a manger. There does my Godhead rest, saith the Lord. Friends, on this eve of Christmas, let us rejoice in the God who comes to us in the things that are little, but are in truth of ultimate strength. Let us see the true light that has come into the world in the small gestures of love and joy that we exchange with family, friends, and neighbors. Like that first Christmas morn, such gestures are signs of something tremendous, for they help open our eyes to behold a greater reality. What we see through the open stable door for all his smallness and vulnerability 
is the solid and indestructible sign of God's love for us and for this world. A very Merry Christmas to you and yours. Amen. Let us now with confidence and trust and faith confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. We entreat you, O Lord. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. We entreat you, O Lord, that there may be peace in your church and to the whole world. We entreat you, O Lord, that we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. We entreat you, O Lord that we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, entrusting one another and all our life to Christ. We entreat you, O Lord. O God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we, who have known the mystery of that light on earth, may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven where with you and the Holy Spirit, he lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope, that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Amen. O God and Father of all, whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you. All nations obey you, all tongues confess and bless you, and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we join the whole creation and celebrate with joy the word made flesh, let us offer prayers to God, who dwells among us to the end of time. Lord God, we commend to you our whole world, all countries, races, nations, and peoples, both young and old, rich and poor. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We call to mind those who have died, but who have bequeathed this world to us, our parents and ancestors, 
all those who have made us who we are and given us our language to speak and our country to live in, for the peace of the world and for our unity in Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, us. hear us. We pray for our children and our children's children and for all who will be born after us, that we do not give them stones instead of bread, that we do not bequeath war to them, but freedom, happiness, and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord hear, hear us. We remember your command to us to love those whom we dislike and who dislike us, and so we pray for them too. We pray for those who are closest to us in friendship and love and who make this world meaningful for us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving Jesus, poorest of the poor, born in a borrowed stable and buried in a borrowed tomb, we bring before you all those who, like you, have nowhere to lay their head, the war refugees exiled from their homes, migrants searching for a place to live, the victims of earthquakes, floods, and disasters, and the countless persons who experience homelessness in our land. Help us, who live securely and in peace, to show compassion for our sisters and brothers and give their lives a new beginning and hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. Loving God, we have come together to give thanks for your birth of your son, Jesus, whose life embodied you and all your promises. We ask you to help us now to embody him so that in seeing us, people will again see him and in seeing him find you who lives and reigns forever. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously Lord. hear us. Source of grace and truth, accept the prayers we offer on this joyful feast. May we come to see the true light who shines throughout the world and who is God for all eternity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
bring our Christmas Eve celebrations to a close, let us offer once again our thanksgiving through the words of the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Oh, 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 oh,
Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. 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 Thank Merry you, Christmas, everyone. everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Jesus. <laughs> Wonderful to see you all. Merry Christmas. Thank you. We've got a few more coming to say Merry Christmas. Oh, Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Some of our favorite people. <laughs> so glad to see you all. Me too. You. See you on their couch tonight. Wow. Have a wonderful time tomorrow together. Thanks to everyone who made the service happen. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Father Lyndon. Yes, thanks to all the AV team and for Mary and Michelle and Ben and for making this such a beautiful occasion in an unusual year. Wish you all a Merry Christmas. Merry and holy and happy, Christmas. happy day tomorrow. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good night, you all. Have a wonderful evening. You too. You too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hi, Stanages. Hello. Hi, hey. Hello. <laughs> okay, I am about Hi, to figure out with this thing. Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's Kyle Kramer. That is. Yeah. Scary. I. Hey, buddy. Under my blanket. <laughs>